Hello, welcome back to My Car Cave. Today we're going to be reviewing two of the Ferrari 126Cs that raced uh, during the 1982 season. Uh, in front you have a previous release uh, Didier Peroni GP West or US GP West from Long Beach uh, with this funky dual wing in the back. And then uh, in the box you have the Belgium Grand Prix where uh, Bill New sadly lost his life. Uh, that version is a limited edition of 250 and comes in this nice little orange uh, slip cover that uh, mirrors his helmet. So let me get that out and then we'll look at each of them side by side. So as always, these uh, GP replicas come with an acrylic cover, which is great for uh, dust-free displaying. Um, and on a leather base, uh, this one in particular for uh, the Villeneuve collection, uh, they are red uh, bases, whereas the uh, GP West version uh, came on a standard black base. But let's go ahead and uh, talk about each car, and I'll just kind of highlight the differences, focusing in on the newer uh, Villeneuve version and, and highlighting in photos the difference on the earlier edition. So as you can see, this is a limited edition of 250 pieces. Comes on this nice leather base. This is the uh, Belgium Grand Prix at Zolder uh, from 1982. This is unfortunately, again, like I said, the race that Villeneuve lost his life during qualifying. Ferrari would not take place uh, in this event uh, for obvious reasons, but they would go on, go on and win the uh, Constructors' Championship that year. So obviously a very successful car. Uh, Peroni lost his life, so that ultimately they had four drivers over the course of the season. And then even with all of that uh, tumultuous stuff going on, they were able to secure the, the constructor's title. So again, proving that this car was a, a top-notch car and, and probably one of the drivers, Peroni or Bill Neuve, may have been able to take the title had they, uh, had they been able to complete the season. So the most obvious uh, difference in these two versions of the car is this weirdo uh, dual rear wing or dual, it's not dual plane, it's just two independent wings attached together in this funky fashion that was used at the U.S. West Grand Prix, which was held in Long Beach that year. So more or less a street circuit. Um, so downforce was probably not at a premium. However, Ferrari felt compelled to uh, design this and install this and, and drive with it on. I, I don't know that too many other cars ever attempted this uh, design. Uh, yeah, they did not have a particularly successful race. Uh, Peroni did not even finish. Uh, Villeneuve, maybe it's 10 or something like that, 8th maybe. Um, so anyway, it's not, not sure what was going on here. I had to add this to my Ferrari collection just because it's bizarre and I'm trying to have a complete uh, 118 scale uh, collection from Ferrari so I have a lot of the variations even from the same season so anyways I wanted to highlight that as a a first uh, difference in these two cars. Another difference you can see here is obviously this is a driver uh, variant uh, as again I've made it very clear I'm biased towards having drivers I think uh, the drivers are part of the personality of Formula One and so it's always important for me to have drivers uh, again I think uh, in this particular case, the helmet is done very well by uh, GP replicas. I've had varying opinions depending on the um, execution of the helmet. Uh, here, you know, again, we're back to this clear lens uh, stuff. So you see this driver figure in here. Uh, in this case, uh, unlike the Manzel, I can actually see his eyebrows as well as his pupils. It's, it's a little kooky, um, but... You know, they had clear lens visors, so what else are they supposed to do? I, I can't blame GP Replica for trying. They had the, um, you know, they do a good job of painting inside the helmet there, you know, the the rubber trim and stuff like that. So I think overall it's a, it's, it's a really good attempt. Um, the driver figure looks great. Uh, it's got this white driver suit, and it has a, a kind of a black wash on it, so it looks dirty as it would uh, in, in race trim. It's not... Uh, not just sparkling white, so I think they they make an effort to do this black wash on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, not totally sure what's going on with the driver's hands here. Uh, you know, I don't know if what you know. He's got one hand uh, on top of the steering wheel. Conceivably, he would add the other one uh, underneath the steering wheel, not in this position where he's not doing anything. Maybe he's reaching to shift or something. I, I don't know, but uh, again, as usual with uh, GP replicas, you get the um cloth uh 
seatbelt and photo etch seatbelt parts. Looks great. Uh, they've done, it's a little hard to tell on this one, but they've done a lot better job with the flocking. Uh, the flocking on the earlier version, the driverless version, is very fuzzy and, and as was at the time when they were releasing those models. GP replicas has made improvements on the flocking, so it's a smaller, finer grain texture, uh, allowing for more detail on the steering wheel and on the uh, seats. The one in the original is, is super fuzzy um, and just kind of, it's nice, but it's just not what it could be. And, and the seat is an odd shape in that first one as well. It's very narrow. Uh, I can't imagine it was actually like that. But that's the cockpit area, so a little bit different here. Again, this is the driver variant. They do offer a non-driver variant for those who prefer not to have the driver. So next up, a little more photo etching. Um, on the front here on the nose, underneath the suspension or in between the suspension, there's a metal photo etch part with this uh, kind of oval shape on it. I, I don't, I can't find photos of that shape uh, or that um, imprint, but it does look really nice. It's, it's a metal photo etch part there. Um, which looks, you know, correct. Uh, the other one, the original release is just painted aluminum silver uh, to paint, not, not photo etch, so it's not nearly as uh, accurate in my opinion. Um, lots of photo etch rivets and stuff like that. They're pretty much the same on, on both cars. There wasn't a lot of variation. Uh, they have it on the windscreen on both cars as well. Uh, some more differences back here on the, you know, in, in the tail end of the car. First of all, from GP Rep, because this is an outstanding effort on the engine at this scale. I have some red wiring, some clear piping there. Uh, looked perfect uh, and real, you know, nicely realistic. Uh, they are featured on both cars, so no differences there. Uh, something that's different is this little uh, blow-off valve, uh, or whatever it is, is done in kind of more of a chrome paint than uh, on the original release. Uh, looks better to me uh, if it's more accurate. I'm not really sure. Um, then, in addition to that, uh, down here on the gearbox, it's kind of this aluminum. But again, they've done this black wash, so it kind of you know, is dirty, and you you get this little that little checkerboard uh, appearance there. It, you know, on the original car, it's just aluminum or painted silver or aluminum. Uh, it's not quite as effective. Uh, but after they do the black wash, it, it looks nice, uh, just like they had done on the driver suit. Then back on the rear wing here, a lot of photo etch parts here. Uh, back here on this uh, rear element, suspension element, you have this photo etch part that's, uh, you can see it's shiny and, and then kind of dull in the middle. Uh, on the original one, it's done in plastic. The relief is better in my opinion. It doesn't have this flattish feel to it um, that, that the photo etch part does. However, when I look online, it's kind of a solid piece. I don't, you know, it doesn't have these little triangular cutout elements. However, that's just one photo. It's not to say this race, this wasn't accurate. So anyways, again, a nice little improvement using more photo ash parts here in the rear uh, than on the original release. Just highlighting a couple more differences. This uh, gas tank box here is done on a, a black finish, um, which I I can't find a photo to confirm whether that's accurate or not. It's done in aluminum on the uh, Didier Peroni version, um, which was released earlier. I think both are probably accurate to uh, their specific races. I just can't find that online. And then uh, secondarily, these uh, air inlets, both on the front and the rear, um, are done in a slightly different color. I feel like the original release is kind of more of a yellow color. Um, little more accurate from what I have seen but this kind of brownish uh, color seems to be pretty good as well um, again way better than other ones where they use this kind of Lego transparent color so I, this is the one I like that you can see it's transparent but it really does feel like the um, the fiberglass that they probably use to make those elements um, and then on this one, it's a, it's a slightly different mold than is on the uh, earlier GP West version. The GP West version has a, you know, sticks out a little bit further and is kind of one opening. This has like two openings here. Um, so that's race specific. I appreciate GP replicas doing that. Um, yeah. So anyway, so small differences, but nonetheless, they're there. And then last, some just some kind of decal differences here. Uh, the AGIF is a larger um, 
decal or, or livery on this car and then on this kind of yellow area which I, I don't know what the material was I, I feel like this yellow is a little bit darker than it should be it should be kind of a lighter carbon fiber textured color um anyways it has these black stripes on there which i i'm guessing it's probably tape or something or mimicking tape you see the photos online and, and it's there at various races they also used a kind of a black side skirt there as well um depending on the photo you look at the same races so it's hard to tell for me what was used in the race um i find variations both ways but uh, yeah this yellow kind of side skirt uh is the one that's more traditionally uh, known on this car and last real difference are the wheels um, these wheels have a more chrome type paint uh, to them the other ones uh, look a little more aluminum they're they're chrome-ish I just think they you know GP rough has gotten a better uh, a better chrome type paint that they're applying uh, the wheel nuts are silver on this one they're black on or kind of uh, gunmetal gray on the other one um, and then the the rim is different on both of these cars, so both the front and rear rims are slightly modified um, from the ones that you see on the uh, earlier GP West car. Uh, these races weren't that far apart, so I don't know how different the wheels really would have been. Um, I, I can't imagine there's a lot of development in wheels and that kind of stuff during the season, but it's, it's possible. So I wanted to highlight two uh, just kind of discrepancies. Uh, first, on the in plate of the front wing, uh, the little rivets there should have been silver. They were silver on the race uh, actual race car and are silver on the uh, earlier release of this model. And then secondly, these uh, air intakes at the back behind the, the Fiat um, decal here, they're painted black on the earlier release version. Therefore, they look like they're air vents as they should be uh here they're just red so they did not you know um paint them black to make them look a little more accurate like they do for the knock uh, and then these are actual vents so with a black piece of plastic behind it so two small minor flaws uh in an otherwise improved car so to sum up another great model from gp replicas uh you know i'm, I'm always happy to have uh variations uh, and i like to see the gp gp replicas is uh, constantly improving uh, on these newer releases over the earlier releases um i think you know I, I, as i've said i'm biased towards having the driver figure so that's fantastic uh, i could care less about the red base or not i'm going to take it off the base anyways um, but anyways happy to have this in my collection if you uh, like the video go ahead subscribe hit like uh, add any, you know, ask any questions, add any comments. I'm happy to answer as much as I can. And I look forward to making more videos soon.